Now let's do one more demo involving wildcard certificates. What a wildcard certificate is, is instead of the certificate being issued to site1.com, it can be issued for wildcard.site1.com. So I have a certificate. There, there's no way to create one through the IIS manager. I had to create it using the make cert executable. It's part of the Windows SDK. Um, so what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to remove the bindings for site1.com, the SSL binding. I'm going to clean that up. We're going to start. We're going to start over with site2.com. So first step is to import the certificate. So I have the certificate here on on the desktop. So from IIS Manager, I'm going to import a certificate. So I go to my certificate file. I give it the password that I used when I exported it. So now we have the certificate for star.site2.com. So now we can go to site2.com and add an SSL binding. So we're going to add a binding of HTTPS. Again, all, all unassigned IP addresses, port 443. And we're going to select, we notice that right now the host name value is grayed out. We see when we select a wildcard certificate, the host name becomes available again. So now on this box, I can use this one wildcard certificate um, for as, as many sites as I want, as long as it's something.site2.com. So I'm going to do www.site2.com. Close that out. Now if I open up Internet Explorer and I navigate to HTTPS slash, or whack whack www.site2.com we'll see that that pulls up just fine we know if we don't even get any errors this time it's because i've trusted the, the 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 certificate authority that created this certificate i trust um, so we have site2.com um, here pulls up just fine and now we're going to create an additional site so i'm just going to create an additional site real quick called beta.site2.com um, i've pre-created the content for it. It's at beta.site2.com. And we're going to give it an HTTPS binding. Again, all unassigned IP addresses, port 443. And again, we're going to use the same certificate, the wildcard for site2.com. And we're going to give it a host name of beta.site2.com. We're going to say OK. And now if I were to navigate to beta.site2.com, we'll see we get you know, a functional site. Now just a couple of things to keep in mind. To use a wildcard certificate, it has to be just for, you have one IP address just for that one wildcard certificate. Um, so you can have multiple wildcard certificates, but you have to have multiple bound to different IP addresses. And then if you want to do the extended validation certificates, that's where um, the, you know, the browser bar up here turns green. It, um, that's not available in wildcard certificates. And then only wildcard certificates are available from certain certificate authorities. So if you have a lot of subdomains that you want to use SSL certs for, a uh, wildcard certificate may be a smart choice there.